Hi everyone, this is Pratik. In this video, I am going to talk about time series clustering and some of its applications in different industries like retail and utility. I will take a sample data set and use Python to do time series clustering on that. And in the next 10 minutes, I am going to explain you everything you need to know to apply time series clustering on any given data set. I will also explain to you two approaches to find the optimum number of clusters on any problem. If you have worked on an unsupervised problem, you would understand that this is the most important part and the most difficult also to decide the, the optimum number of clusters in any given problem because we don't know actual number of classes that, the, that a certain data set should be divided on. And finally, I will explain to you how we can calculate the performance of clustering on, on any time series clustering problem so that we have a metric to compare different approaches and which helps us to, to know whether certain approach is working better than the other and we are improving on the clustering performance. So let's jump into it. So let us see what is time series clustering. From this slide at the top we can see there are multiple time series which we can group using time series clustering into these three clusters based on similarity of patterns. So we can see each cluster has similar looking time series and they are of similar patterns. But the question here would be how do we define similarity of time series? There are different measures that we can use in order to define the similarity of between two time series. One of the approaches could be using Euclidean matching. In case of Euclidean matching, we calculate the Euclidean distance point by point between two time series. So for each corresponding point we calculate the Euclidean distance and we sum it over the whole time series that gives us the distance between two time series that we can use as a measure of similarity between these two time series. But as in this example we can see in case of time series they are not always aligned. In this example we can clearly see that this hum is similar to this hum, this trough is similar to this trough, similarly this hum is also similar to this hum and in order to find similarity of patterns we should be comparing distances between these two points these two corresponding points but Euclidean matching doesn't give us that so in order to do that in order to align two time series we will use an approach called dynamic time warping so when we do dynamic time warping we apply it on any time series it will tell us two things First, it will align the two time series. That means that it will tell us which point on one time series corresponds to which points on the other time series. Like in this example, we can see it has aligned the troughs with, with the corresponding trough and humps with the corresponding humps. And it's, it calculates the distance between those two time series. It gives us the cost of aligning those two time series and, and that is the measure that we would use as a similarity measure for comparing different pairs of time series. First, let us look at some of the applications of time series clustering. In retail industry, large consumer goods firms use this technique to forecast sales pattern of newly launched products. So suppose any new launch, new product is being launched in the market and they want to estimate its, its sales pattern. So in order to do that, it needs to, it needs to be assigned to similar group of products which are already in the market and we know their sales pattern. In order to do that, first we need to cluster past products. For clustering, we use time series clustering. Once we cluster those past products, we can find out features which define those clusters and based on those fe features we can assign a new product into one of those clusters. Once we assign that product to one of the clusters we can estimate its sales pattern based on the average sales pattern of the products in that group. So this is one of the example in retail industry. Similarly utility firms use this technique to group consumers based on their power usage patterns. 
they can then find out features to group any new consumer to one of the groups examples of such features could be type of business industry or a household location of the consumer etc these firms also use this technique to find anomalies in usage patterns of consumers compared to others in the same group so i am going to discuss about these applications in using some real world data sets in my next videos so you want if you want to check that out please subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when i upload that so now let's look at how do we use python to do time series clustering on a sample data set the sample data set that i have used is provided from ts learn ts learn is a python package that provides machine learning tools for the analysis of time series and i am going to use this package primarily for time series clustering so like let us look at the data the data has a shape of 69 by 275 by 1 it means that we have 69 time series and each of the time series has a length of 275 so each of the time series has a length of 275 and like that we have 69 time series so these are 69 we have three classes in the data set generally in an unsupervised problem we don't have actual class labels but here we we are provided with actual class labels so we'll use it just to compare different approaches after that let us look at the pre processing step i have converted each of the time series into time series with zero mean and unit, unit variance i have done this because i want to compare only the shapes of the time series and the range of the values of time series is not important to important to me that is the assumption that i am taking after this pre processing step let us look at the data i have plotted 12 time series here so we can see that each of these time series which are red marked are similar they have similar patterns and we want to to group the all these time series into same cluster similarly for other time series as well okay so after this the next step is to decide the number of clusters to decide the number of clusters i have used elbow method which is using the plot of inertia which is sum of square distances with respect to the number of clusters this sum of square distance is the distance of each of the sample with respect to its cluster centroid and we are going to sum it over and then plot it with each number of clusters so the number as we increase the number of clusters the inertia is going to decrease for sure but we want the number of clusters at which after which the inertia value is not changing much so we we see that at cluster is equal to 3 after that the the plot is flattening so we we should take three number of clusters for this data set this is first approach the next approach is based on silhot score silhot score is a metric to calculate the performance of clustering for example if we have this kind of data set here and we have two clusters so for this this point here the the silhot score will be b minus a by max of b b comma a where b is the distance of this point data point with respect to its next nearest cluster centroid and a is the distance of this point with respect to its cluster centroid so you can see that the the more we increase b the more we increase b the better the clustering and it will increase the silhot score and the silhot score ranges from minus 1 to 1 the closer we have a value close to 1 the better the clustering so let us look at the plot that i have done using silhot score first we have values for each cluster for cluster 2 the average silhot score for clustering is 0.67 for cluster is equal to 3 we have value 0.45 and then for cluster is equal to 4 we have 0.42 so 
the higher the value the better the clustering generally but we should not be only looking at the value of silhot we should also look at at what number of clusters we are dividing the data set perfectly so in this example we can see for cluster is equal to 2 we have a silhot score of 0.6 an average silhot score of 0.67 but cluster 0 silhot score is much lower than the average which is not acceptable which is which we should find a plot where each of the clusters silhot score is also comparable to the average silhot score or higher than the average silhot score which is found for cluster is equal to 3 and we can see on the right plot which is the plot of the first two principal components so we can see that it is dividing the data into three clusters very well so this approach also tells that we should divide this data set into three clusters so once we have decided the number of clusters let us apply k-means so we have taken the number of clusters is equal to three first i have plotted the actual clusters which is based on the class labels then i have used the euclidean distance metric to to cluster the data set i have used time series k-means provided from ts learn and i have taken the number of clusters as, as 3 and random state is equal to 0 seed is equal to 0 here and i have plotted the clusters here after that i have used dynamic time warping distance to do clustering i have used time series k-means provided from ts learn here the parameters are number of clusters 3 and init is equal to 2 this means that we are going to do two initializations of centroids and we are going to use the results where we have lower inertia values after that metric is equal to dtw which is dynamic time warping distance and next important parameter is max iteration barycenter is equal to 10 so it means that for finding the average of different time series in a cluster for example we have three time series and we want to find the average of this time series so the algorithm first starts with a, a certain value certain value of for average which may be this and then it it optimizes on that and the number of iterations it does that optimization is 10 so this parameter means that only next is the random state seed after that we we can see the clusters created from dtw so all these plots i have put put at one place and we can see we can compare different approaches at the top we have the actual divisions actual class labels then we have euclidean k-means approach and after that we have dynamic time warping based approach we can see that the dynamic time warping approach is very comparable to the actual so this cluster is similar to that then this cluster is similar to that and this cluster is similar to this but with using euclidean we can see that the division of clusters is not so great so as we have seen earlier dynamic time warping is a better approach to use for time series clustering and if we look at the scores as well the silhot score for euclidean is 0.5 whereas for dynamic time warping it is 0.87 second metric is rand index which is basically using the actual class labels and for a perfect clustering we should get a value of rand, rand index is equal to 1 which we have got in case of dynamic time warping so this tells us that dtw is a better approach to use after this i have done the same analysis with with data of four classes i am going to share this notebook in the video description 
so you can look at this analysis as well i did this in order to see if the same approaches work here as well and i found that they work pretty well so we come to the end of this video in the next videos of this series i will show how the same approaches of time series clustering can be applied to real world data sets of retail and utility so for now goodbye and see you in the next video